come on, come on, come on, clap your hands. Come on, how many know that God is faithful? He's a faithful God. Hallelujah, he woke you up this morning on time. He called at you on your right mind. And he gave you a sound. Come on, you have a sound this morning. When you make a sound in the atmosphere, demons, triple demons, why? Because of the sound. If you know anything about the lion, the lion roar. And when the lion roar, everything, everything that a tremble in his presence, everyone that hears the sound begins to shake. And that's how demons are when you begin to roar in the spirit. Amen? Amen. When you begin to make a sound in the atmosphere, you tend to make demons run. Yes, yes. You tend to make demons flee. So the spot of became to offer up a sound this morning. Come on, put a sound in the atmosphere this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. 
Father God, we can just worship you. We can just worship you.
to sing it solemnly. For he is my Lord, for he's my Lord. He's my Lord, for he's my Lord. Come on, he's a risen to me. He's our resurrected Savior. Come on. He has risen.
awesome. And you are wonderful, God. We thank you today for all that you have done in here today. We thank you for your people today. God, we pray your blessings upon them this morning. We pray, God, as we move further into the service of God. And look at your word, oh God. We pray that you would anoint as the hair, minds to understand, and hearts to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church in this 21st century. Bless us now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
wonderful people of God, servants of God. Amen. You are welcome at great faith and please come back again. Amen. 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 Once again, good morning and happy Resurrection Sunday. This is a glorious day. Amen. We have Mr. Oliver here with us today. God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. Now Palm Sunday has passed. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Yes. And Good Friday has passed. But Good Friday is crucify him. Crucify him. And now this is Resurrection Sunday. How many of you know had not been for Friday, there would be no Sunday. Amen. Yes. Had not been for the what? Death of Jesus Christ, there would be no resurrection of Jesus Christ. So he, we have to go through Friday in order to get to Sunday. Amen? Amen? And if you're glad that you're here on Resurrection Sunday, come on, put your hands together and tell God thanks. You ain't no way in the hospital. You ain't no way dead in the cooling board in the dead house. You're sitting in the presence of the Lord, so you ought to rejoice. Amen? You ought to rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. Amen. Amen. Now on this Resurrection Sunday, I want to minister for a few minutes. Look with me to the book of Matthew 28. My God. I want to read from verses 1 through 10. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. Come on, read with me. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall he see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Verse 10. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Father, once again, in the name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you for another opportunity that we can look at your word and see the wonderful plans that you have for our lives. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to point out three significant events. Three significant events surrounding the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Three. Somebody say three. Three. Three significant events surrounding the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Events mean what happens. What, you know, you'll say what kind of event it is. And so we want to talk about three events. Amen. Now in Matthew number one. We're going to go through it. It's only three. Matthew 28 verse 1 says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. The first significant event surrounding the resurrection of Jesus is the time of Jesus' resurrection. Did you get that? Write that down. The time of Jesus' resurrection. Jesus arose after.
after the Sabbath with Allah. The Sabbath is Saturday. Sunday is the first day of the week. Amen? That is why we celebrate today. This is Resurrection Sunday. Matthew said in the end of the Sabbath, which means late on Saturday, early Sunday morning, before dawn, Jesus arose before sunrise on Sunday morning. Somebody say Jesus arose. Jesus arose. Jesus arose, you know. This is significant to the early Christian believers. This is so significant that they broke away from the practice of worship on Saturday and began to worship on Sunday. Now the day of the resurrection of our Lord is what? Sunday. Jesus arose on the first day of the week, Sunday morning. He was in the grave on Saturday on the Sabbath. Am I right about that? Yeah, now, listen. Nothing wrong with people worshiping on the Sabbath, which is Saturday. But Jesus was still in the grave. He was still dead on the Sabbath Amen. day. Amen. And so the early church said, you know what? I want to worship Jesus on Resurrection Sunday. I want to worship Jesus on the first day of the week. Amen. 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 What do we give? We give the first fruit, right? Amen. So we give Jesus what? Our first day. Amen. And so I'm not knocking the Sabbath day. I'm not knocking Saturday. But Jesus changed everything when he come. We, we are not living by the law anymore. Amen. And that's the reason why Jesus wasn't here to hear all the laws from the people had he risen on Saturday. Amen. Amen. And so Jesus rose early. People. Early. <laughs> Somebody say early. 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 Sunday morning was the time when Jesus rose from the dead. Amen? Amen. And so I, I try to make it as clear as possible. And like I say, I'm not knocking no other church, but I know I want to I want to worship my Jesus on Resurrection Sunday. Anybody want to worship that Jesus today on Resurrection Sunday? He was still there on Saturday. Amen? Ain't nothing he could have done for us in the grave on Saturday. Y'all hear me? He couldn't do nothing for you on Saturday on the Sabbath. But on Sunday morning, early, he got up out of the grace. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven. I didn't know it broke my soul. Nobody ought to put your hands together and give God a praise. For the time that he raised me again. Early Sunday morning. Why is some of y'all sleeping? You know? Why is you sleeping? And that's the reason why he said, early should we rise as we pray. Get up early in the morning, people. Get up to something about early Sunday morning. Yeah. It's about something about early every morning. Amen. And everybody else sleeping. <laughs> you make you trouble in the truth. All them demons will try to get up after you to try to curse you. You done bind them up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so we got to be ahead of the demons. We got to yeah. make sure early in the morning, Amen. four o'clock, five o'clock, whatever time you get up in the morning, don't wait for nine o'clock when everybody gets up. Get up early in the morning. Four o'clock, five o'clock, get on your knees and cry out to Jesus. See, there's something about there's something about crying out to him in the silence of the night. That's when I mostly do my study. My husband will tell you, 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'd be looking at the world when there is peace and quietness. Amen? Amen. The devil ain't all about romping around and doing his thing. So that's when I get in the word. Amen? Amen? And people, what was the time? What is the significant thing about the resurrection? Is the what? The time. The time. The time. The time. Amen. Number two, was uh, Matthew 28, was two and four. I tell you, I ain't keep you long this morning. You can get your Easter dinner early today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and was two, Matthew, come on, stay in Matthew 28. We, we're not moving from there. I stayed right there today. Was two through four, and it reads, And, and behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning 
and his raiment as snow. White as snow. Amen. Come on, I'm glad you're with me. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became a dead man. The second significant event surrounding the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the miraculous event of Jesus' resurrection. The miraculous event of Jesus resurrection to define miraculous is something occurring through divine or supernatural intervention. Verse 2 said, and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. That's a supernatural event, amen? The earthquake symbolized that a historical conclusion was taking place, an event that never happened before. Angels descended from heaven and rolled back the stone from the door. Now, if you know the story of, like I say, this never happened before. You, you know the story of Lazarus, right? Amen. When Jesus called him forth, but first before God, Jesus called him forth, he tell the men to roll back the stone. Am I right about that? Yeah. That was physical strength. They needed a lot of men to roll, the, to roll away the stone. And they had to, when Lazarus came out, when God, Jesus called him forth, he couldn't unwrap himself. Men had to unwrap him and loose him, amen? So this is supernatural. Jesus, the door, the earthquake shake, and the angels rolled away the stone. Now listen to this. The gods, they were put on, on God to watch so that they say, you know, they already heard the story that Jesus was supposed to raise in three days. And so they sent the gods to watch so nobody, they say, could steal Jesus and then say he was resurrected. So they put a seal on the door to make sure that nobody could go in there. And the Bible says that the earthquake happened and, and the angels came and rolled away the stone. Yes. My God. How many of you know the stone wasn't rolled away for Jesus to come out, you know? <laughs> Jesus got a voice through that himself. All right about that. The stone was rolled about, rolled away for a witness so that these people could witness what happened on. My God. Amen. Y'all think the stone was rolled away for Jesus to come up? No. No way. The power, he had the power to push through that rock. But in order for there to be witnesses, he had to roll away the stone so that the people could go in and see where Jesus laid. My God, people, roll away the stone. Amen? Amen. The Bible said the angels descended from heaven and rolled back the stone from the door. Now, verse 3 said his countenance was like lightning. Now, in different... Um, the synoptics, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's the synoptics, you know. The, some of them talk as if it was two angels, some talk as if it was more than one, but, but Matthew said, he said his continence, meaning one person, amen? His continence was like lightning. His face was striking, frightening, startling, and brilliant, and his raiment as white as snow. His clothing was white and pure. Nowhere in the Bible we see this happening. Amen? This was different from Lazarus. This was all about the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. He, Jesus, had been tragically put to death by the hands of man. But gloriously, Jesus was resurrected from the dead by the power of God. Somebody ought to say, thank you Jesus yeah, thank you, for the Jesus. power of God. Come on, put your hands together and bless God. Yeah. The resurrection people of Jesus Christ paved the way for you and I. Yes. Hmm? Because Jesus rose with the power that paved the way for you and I. Am I right about that? Yeah. And so we ought to be glad to celebrate this resurrection Sunday. Amen? Amen? The power of God is awesome and terrible. There is, this is, now listen, this is a strong message to the unbelievers because a lot of people believe that they got more power than God. Yeah. My God. 
<laughs> a lot of people who doing whatever they do. So I don't preach about all that stuff because I don't go there. <laughs> but there's some people who in the church who was doing some underhand work and they believe that they have more power than God. You all know that? Yeah, that's oh. the truth. They believe, oh, I could do this to her. I could do that to him. They have no power, people. You and I have more power than what they have. In our little finger. Why? Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So you don't go around this resurrection Sunday taking every time you step on something, somebody trying to do you something. Ain't nobody could do you nothing. No weapon. Because of this resurrection, you got power. You got the power when you lay down to sleep to pull down every stronghold, every cliff that bear up, set up, and bear up to curse you. You can bind it up and return it to send them up. These people got me all bind up. Bind, lose yourself. Amen. Lose yourself. You let the devil know. Tell him you ain't got no power over That's me. Right. That's no right. power. Amen. You got the power of the Holy Spirit in you because of this resurrection Sunday. And you ought to use your power, people. Amen. Use your power in your yes. business, in your church, yes. in your family. Wherever you go, you use your power. That's why some of them couldn't even hardly talk after that. Because what they saw, they never saw it in their life before. Amen? Amen, amen, amen and amen. Let's go to the last one. Number three, Matthew 28, 5 through 10. Now, I'm going to go through this verse by verse. We got five verses we want to go through. 
Matthew 28, 5 to 10. I want to tell you what the third significant event surrounding the resurrection of Jesus is. And that is the appeal of the resurrection. Write that down. The third significant event surrounding the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the appeal of the res res resurrection. To define appeal means to make a serious or urgent request. Amen? Now verse 5 says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. Now when we are seeking after Jesus, we should not fear. That's the first word. I, I want you to know that fear not is in the Bible 365 times. One fear not for every day. Amen? Amen. When we are seeking after Jesus, we ought not to fear not. Amen? We ought not to fear. Why? Because Jesus, the, our Heavenly Father, knows that we are seeking after Jesus. And if we are seeking after Jesus, don't care who else seeking after us, it does not matter because they can't do us nothing. Amen? Amen. Amen? There is no fear in seeking Jesus. Jesus knows the person who is seeking after him. God knows the movement of every heart. God knows if we are serious about our Christian war or we just play in church. Fear not. If we see this word fear not in our Christian walk, why are we so fearful? Hmm. Why everything we are so fearful of, anything happen, we are fearful. Yes. Somebody coming here with a gun now. <laughs> all these Christians will be all up in the bathroom together. <laughs> Come on, fear not Christians. will stand up and say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I decree and I declare that nothing you do in here will prosper Satan the blood of Jesus is against you leave this house right now now nah, listen here yeah, he ought to be fair <laughs> take authority when Jesus saved us he didn't save us for us to be scared of the devil you know he saved us and he gave us power so the devil could be scared of us. Amen. Amen. Am I right about that? Yes. <laughs> you think you think all this power we got, we need to be scared of any demons? I know I ain't scared of nothing. They'll tell you. Anybody who work around me will tell you, you walk in that shop and you look like you was a demon, I'd be walking towards you. <laughs> Say what you saying. <laughs> I'd be walking towards you. And when you walk towards them, you take that door, you know. They say, in miss, you, 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 what kind of flowers do you sell? I say, you're looking for flowers, leave out of here. In the name of Jesus Christ. In a weapon. And listen, man, are we going to have a church who's going to allow the power of God to work through them? Yes. Do we have a church of people who, who is ready to go out there and I'm ready to lay hands on the sick because of this resurrected power and see the sick and the dead raise up. How many of you see accidents on the side of the road and all you're doing is looking, boy, the whole damn dead, say in the name of Jesus you should live and not die. Yeah. You, you people, we need to do what God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, the, the angel said, fear no. not. Oh, stop fearing everything. You fear, I fear, I'm going to lose my job. I fear somebody can take my promotion. I fear this. I fear that. I fear somebody can take my husband. <laughs> my Lord. My what you fearing? <laughs> you just do what you're supposed to do. Amen. <laughs> you mean I fear too? <laughs> you, know, just, you know what you need to say. Mm. This is my husband and you know devil can take him. Amen. Right. I ain't mean, scared. That's right. You cannot be scared. Amen? Amen. I know one lady, she told me she feared that her son was going to get killed. And she told me that when her son got stabbed on the beach years ago, but 15 years ago, she said, I tell him, 
I tell him if he don't stop going out with that fella thing and kill him. I say, oh, look at this woman kill this boy. <laughs> but I didn't tell her that. You know, that would really bring sorrows on her. Because every time she said that, she sent that out in the atmosphere That's true. and for sure. That's true. That is it. That's true. He was dead at 18. 18 or 19, at a very young age. And guess what? He got stabbed. Not in a fight, but he got stabbed while his partner a fight. My God. You know why? Because she spoke that. Yes. That's true. She spoke that over his life. Yes. You don't have to fear nothing, man. You have your children. Your children are made to school yes. or wherever they are. God got them. Got them. Yes. Fear yes. not. Amen. The power that you have in them, all you do is get up, sis, and pray. Pray. Yes. Send it forth. It. Amen. Demon, you, you will not have my child. You, you, you after them, you will not have them. They belong to God. Amen? Amen? Fear not. Jesus is saying, the Bible is saying, the angels are saying to the women, fear not. Okay? Now, 2 Corinthians 5.15, you don't have to turn there. And Jesus died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Amen? If you seek me, you'll find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Jesus was crucified to save every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. Amen? Verse 6. Let's go there. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come and see where the place where the Lord lay. Christ has now risen from the dead and conquered death. The angels reminded the women of Jesus' word as he said. You all see it there? Remember? Amen. He said it. Matthew, Matthew 16, 21. This is what it, what it read. From that time. Now this is the word that the angel is telling the women to remember. Okay? From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things to the elders and chief priests and scribes and to be killed and be raised again the third day. The angels was reminding the women about what Jesus taught them. And that's why he said, what? Come and see where the place where he leads. And he said, remember. Remember, he is not here, for he is risen, as he had said. Now, he has said it to us. How many of you know he is already risen? Amen? Yes. Amen. He has already risen. The women were told to come and see the place where Jesus lay. The women were eyewitnesses of Jesus' resurrection. I, 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 <laughs> I don't want to go too deep in that. I don't want to go deep in that, but a lot of times the women today are rejected in the churches. People, a lot of people don't like women preachers. Some women don't like women preachers. But these women, the Bible says that who 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 went to the who went to the tomb? Who we talked to? He said in verse 7, he said, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is raised from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall he see him. Lo, I have told you. I want you. This is the greatest news in all history. Christ risen, he shall meet you and I again. Now there's a voice of scripture I want us to look at in this last text. It says, and, it says, and they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. The women ran quickly to tell the glorious news to the disciples that Christ the Lord is risen from the dead. Now, who are these women? I want you to look at this. Maybe, like I say, I don't want to go too deep into this, but I want you to look at Luke 24, which is 6 through 11. We're wrapping this up. Anybody, I want you to look at that. Anybody got it? Luke 20, 24, verse 6 through 11. Come on, read it, and then I will read it. Come on, Luke 24, verse 6 through 11. Luke 
24. Am I, am I in the right chapter? Somebody please. He's not here. He's not here. He's not here. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary, mother of James, and, and the other women that were with were them, which told, told these things unto the apostles. Mm -hmm. And their words were seen, were seen to them as idle tales, tales and, and they, they believed them not. not. That's why, women, <laughs> we can't worry when people don't believe us. Listen to this now. Because some of y'all probably didn't have a Bible. He is not here. For is risen. Who's risen? Jesus, right? Yes. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his word and returned from the sepulchre and told, and told all these things unto the eleven. Who's the eleven? Disciples. The disciples and to all the rest. Who it was now? These the women. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. That's right. Jesus. <laughs> you heard who told the message right. to the apostles? The women. Women. Now look at verse 11. Listen, 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 listen to verse 11, women. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Mighty God. Mighty God. The first one, go and tell women. Y'all stop being so scared to, to be a witness for Jesus. Amen. God called us. That's it. He anointed us. He appointed us. Amen. Don't mind some people say, oh, you, you following a woman preacher. Take them to Luke 24. Amen. To women. That's it. The women told the apostles. Who is the apostle? The one sent by God. That's right. Uh -huh. oh my God. Just want to yield the vessel. Huh? Amen. No respect to person. No respect to a person. He said, go tell them scary people. <laughs> ah. I love you, man. Y'all ain't, these said in this church, you ain't no scary man. This, no, this no. prophet could pull down every strong one and break down everything. <laughs> but where were the disciples when this woman was out seeking Jesus? Amen. Where were the disciples? Huh? They were afraid to be killed. They were afraid that the Romans would kill them. Mighty I ain't knocking no men, but I'm just telling y'all the Bible. Yes, yes. But you know, we be crazy, right, women? Yes. We ain't fair enough. We will walk right up in the face and say, hey, what do you say? <laughs> you want true. some of this? That's true. <laughs> 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 huh? That's true. Huh? Anybody going to talk to y'all? But sometimes you back them on the side and say, let me handle this. I got this. <laughs> but I'm not knocking no man but people I just want you to know don't look at us as, as, as flesh look at us in the spirit we are all men we are all servants of God women are servants men are servants so people don't knock the women they're trying to carry God's word help and to bring it to pass amen even though they say they be sound like, you know, idle tales and they don't believe us, but God. God is good. I leave that alone. Amen? Amen. All the men, come on, put your hands together and give God a hand God praise for the women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen and amen. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew 28, yeah. 9. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? The men don't want to be intimidated. That's right. The men don't want to be intimidated because a lot of times, Women, like
like one pastor said, he had 5,000 women in his church. And he said the only thing the women wants to do is help in the ministry. That's right. And he was telling the men, pastors, y'all stop taking these women trying to take over. Awesome. They're not trying to take over. Amen. They are the help meet. Amen. They come to help to carry the message. Right. Amen. Amen. And so that is like that. All right. Now Matthew 28 verse 9. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. Somebody say, All hail. All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. All hail. That is to say, rejoice. I always wonder why the Rastas. <laughs> Y'all just hear the Rastas them say that? Yeah. All hail. Yeah. Anybody ever hear that? Yeah. All hail. I, 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 until I study this uh, to preach, I, Jesus say all hail. He's saying to us, rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice for the resurrection. Amen? Amen. And when he said all hail, rejoice, what the people did? They worship him Amen. because of what he has done. Amen? Amen. Was, um, John 16, 20 says, Verily, verily I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the word, the world shall rejoice. And he shall be sorrowful, but your sorrows shall be turned into joy. Somebody say, all hail. All hail. All hail, all hail. All hail King Jesus. All hail. Come on, people. All hail, King Jesus. All hail, King Jesus. All hail, King Jesus. All hail, Emmanuel. I know we don't have no music. We early in the in message. I want us to stand together. If you could find it up on your phone, up from the grave, your rules. I want us to sing that. Come on. Find it on your phone if you don't know it. Up from the grave, your rules. Anybody can sing? Come on, let's sing. Low in the grave he lay Jesus, my Savior, waiting the coming day. Jesus, my Lord. Jesus, my Lord. Up from the grave. Up from the grave he arose. With a mighty triumph. With a mighty triumph. He arose with a victory. He arose. Jesus, my Lord. Come on. Lord, in the grave he lays. Jesus, my Savior. Wait in the coming day. Jesus, my Lord. Chorus. Up from the grave he arose. Yeah. 
arose the victim from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his sins to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. What's free? That cannot keep it free. Jesus, my Savior. He tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord. Come on, let's hear the man. Yes. Death cannot keep it prey. Death cannot keep its prey. Jesus, my Savior. He tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord. Come on, people. Death cannot keep Jesus, my Savior. Jesus, my Savior. He tore the bars away. because you don't notice Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This is your day. We want to pray for you today. Amen. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, recognize I recognize that I could not rejoice, I could not rejoice because, I didn't, I don't know you because I don't know you as my personal Savior. As my personal savior. Today, today, I want to make you I want to make you Lord of my life. Lord of my life. Because I recognize, because I recognize that, I'm a sinner, that I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. Need a savior. Dear, Jesus, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Me of my sins. Cleanse, me Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. From all unrighteousness. Dear, Jesus, Dear Jesus, create in me a clean heart. Me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Dear Jesus, I open my heart to you today. Come in today. Come in to stay. Dear Jesus, thank you for saving my soul and making me whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer today, welcome to the family of God. Come on, people of God, give God a big hand. 